Next, I want to bring up our first vice chair. You know, I can't say enough wonderful things about Nakeem. Of course, she's in the state senate now. Congratulations on that. But she also touches a lot of people nationally. I don't think a lot of people understand how broad Nakeem Williams is involved uh, in our national scene that brings a lot of attention to Georgia. She is a phenomenal asset for this party and for taking Georgia forward. Join me in welcoming our first vice chair, Nakeem Williams. Thank you. Now, I almost got a little upset because I'm reading the agenda. I'm like, I thought my name was before Ted's, but then they told me they were saving me for last. I was okay with it. <laughs> Thank y'all for staying um, for a while today. And I know that we went through a lot of information around our own bylaws, but there's some big things happening on the DNC level that I just want to catch you up on. How many of you have heard of the Unity Reform Commission? Okay, a few people. So how many people know that big thing that we do every four years when people dress up some of us in Donkey Cheryl to get ready to go to the convention to nominate our president? We're all familiar with the presidential, um, the DNC convention for the presidential candidates. Well, in 2016, there, were a lot, there was a lot of angst leading into the election because we had um, two very competitive candidates. And out of that, to make sure that we have the most inclusive party and we're welcoming everybody in this process because that's what we're all about, bringing more people into the fold so that we can get more Democrats elected to office, the Unity Reform Commission was um, brought together. So as a result of that, give me one second, um, the Rules and Bylaws Committee of the DNC has been meeting for, what year is it, 2018? So literally for two years, and they just had their last meeting yesterday. So I have a quick update from that meeting and the results from that of what is gonna go before the entire DNC to be voted on for changes for the delegate selection process for 2020. So I got this email yesterday from Chairman Perez as an um, update from the Rules and Bylaws Committee. So I'm just gonna share just the broad overview. Um, this week, the DNC Rules and Bylaws Committee took a bold step toward implementing reforms that will strengthen our party and put Democrats in the strongest position to elect the next president in 2020. Since January, the Rules and Bylaws Committee has continued to work to implement the recommendations of the Uni Unity Reform Commission, including major reform to the role of automatic delegates in our 2020 presidential nominating process. So the automatic delegates is what you hear about on the news a lot as superdelegates, so that would include Bows. I'm just a regular delegate, but some people call me a super delegate too. And then our DNC member, Shake, is in the room. He's a DNC member. Um, I saw Representative Pam Stevenson, a DNC member, Sally Rosser. Wendy Davis is another one of our DNC members. She's in New York vacationing with her niece, so um, she's having fun while we're in this room all day today. Um, we, Richard Ray is also a DNC member from Georgia. Louis Elrod, who serves as a DNC member as, by virtue of being the president of the Young Democrats of America. And Dan Halpern, who is also a DNC member um, by his appointment by Chairman Perez. So, the changes. Um, under the new rules, which we'll all vote on in August, unpledged delegates will only vote on the first presidential nominating ballot if a candidate has already earned enough pledged delegate votes from state primaries and caucuses to win the nomination. So what that means is in 2016, we automatic delegates or super delegates in our state would not have had a vote on the first ballot because n neither one of the candidates had already well, and I guess it depends on the timeline, but a candidate, a presidential candidate, has to already have enough votes to secure the nomination before superdelegates get a vote on the first ballot. So this has been, there's been a lot of iterations of this, and this was the place that most people were comfortable with. There's still a lot of discussion back and forth, but I wanted to bring this to you today so that if you have any questions or concerns or comments or feedback, now is the time to reach out to your DNC members in the room so that we can get this information to the committee so that additional suggestions, changes, comments can be heard before the August 25th vote. Um, 
Automatic delegates have never decided on nominee, but this reform eliminates the possibility that the will of our party's grassroots voters may go unheeded in the future, while maintaining Democratic leaders' hard-earned right to show support for the candidate of their choosing. This reform in particular puts to bed a conversation that has plagued our party and candidates for much of the last decade and restores trust among many grassroots voters who we need to be engaged and enthusiastic in 2018, 2020, and beyond. So that, that is the biggest, um, the most simple way to explain what the change is. And that went from eliminating superdelegates altogether was the first um, suggestion, and that didn't get anywhere. And then the next suggestion was only allowing members of Congress to be superdelegates, and we were like, but what about the people who are working like on the grassroots level that are engaged in the party every day? And so why do, what, why would one group of people get special votes? And so that didn't quite get anywhere. And so this is kind of where we've landed, but there's still a lot of conversation and concern. Change is hard. We saw what just happened here today when we were discussing our own bylaws. And this is a major, major shift for the entire country of how our delegates vote and present themselves at our national convention. So I wanted to make sure that I brought that information to you today. Um, so remember your DNC members in the room, um, all of the DNC members, I'm sure if you don't have their contact information, I have it in my phone and I'm willing to share it with you so that you all don't just call me, you can call Sally and Pam and Shake and Wendy and Richard, like you can call some other people as well, and DuBose. But um, the other thing, our chairwoman of the African American Caucus here in Georgia, Barbara Campbell, mentioned that next week, on July 19th, the DNC will be in Atlanta. So remember how a lot of people in the room were saying they wanted a little more information from the DPG, like trickling down? Well, here I stand saying that I would like a lot more information from the DNC trickling down as well. So I feel you, um, and it's a work in progress, but the DNC is hosting the, an African American Leadership Summit in the morning from 8.30 to 3 in Atlanta. Um, and then that evening, starting at 6 o'clock, is going to be the I Will Vote Gala. The I Will Vote Gala, um, Chairman, Chairwoman Campbell mentioned um, all of the dignitaries that will be speaking. But after, after further digging, this is a function of the DNC Finance Committee. So this event, like you have, you have to pay to register for the all-day summit and pay for the dinner. So that's probably why, um, like it's been, it, it's a function of the finance committee. They're trying to raise money at all levels, and so that's why some of the information has been a little hard to come by for a lot of people on the grassroots level, myself included, because um, it's kind of costly. So. Um, but there are some opportunities. I just found out this while we're sitting here in the room that there is going to be panel discussions and I'm going to be on one of the panels. Don't ask me the topic or the time because I just got the phone call while I was sitting here on the front row. But if um, there, I text back and ask are there still volunteer opportunities or opportunities for members of the party to be involved because we're down in Macon and I would love to share that information and the answer was yes. If I could collect information of people who want to be engaged on next Thursday, either in a volunteer capacity or if you would like to register, then see me and I can get that information for you. I think that might be... So, I... The dinner that evening is going to be at the Westin. And that morning, the conversation was still being decided between the gathering spot and the West End, depending on the number of registrations and the capacity of the space needed. What was that question? The West End. Yes. And I'm happy to answer any questions, but I know that we are like church and we have lots of conversations when the meeting ends out in the hallway, and I will be sticking around because... Carter and Leslie left me and went to the Red Circle to buy dinosaurs, so unless somebody's giving me a ride back to Atlanta, I gotta wait for them to get back. So I'm happy to have any conversations in the hallway when the meeting adjourns. Yes? All that you said is all well and good, but it still burns me up that the Electoral College can make a change, an individual can change their mind about the way they vote. What are we gonna do about that? We spend all this money to the for the super, uh, whatever, and all the other yeah. stuff, I feel you, and that's why we got to make sure that we get the right people elected, because in order to get that change, we have to have some different leadership um, in, in the majority in our state and in Washington, 
and we are changing the face of Georgia, and when Georgia changes, the rest of the country is going to change, and we just have to keep knocking on doors, and there is no replacement for direct voter contact and taking our message directly to the doors of voters, and that's what I'm going to be doing between now and November, and I hope you'll join me, because the more Democrats we get elected to office, the better our chances are of getting that change.